A little bit less than a week ago, I put out my first impressions video of the ROG Ally. And this is a really cool device, but it's not without its problems. And in today's video, what I wanna do is I wanna give you five problems that I've been running into in this past week with the ROG Ally and the solutions that I found for them. Let's get started. One of the things that I complained about in my first impressions video of the ROG Ally was the fact that Diablo 4 wouldn't allow me to change the resolution that the game was running at. I was getting lower frame rates and I wasn't super happy about that. Uh, and then I thought that it was because the game was running at 1080p. Well, it turns out that's not really the reason, but you may have a game that's running at a higher resolution than you want, but you're unable to change it for whatever reason. Somebody told me it had something to, to do with DirectX 12. I will just assume that they are correct. But that's beside the point. If you want to be able to adjust the resolution of a game, but the game doesn't allow you to do that, well, then you can just set it system wide. Now, in order to do that, you're gonna open up your armory crate and uh, under here, you're gonna see your game library and then your settings. Under settings, on this side, you're going to see your command center. The command center is the uh, things that come up when you press this button over here. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press on plus and then I can scroll through this list and find the thing that I'm looking for. In this case, we're looking for resolution and I would just tap that, but I've already got it added to mine so I don't have to worry about it. So I'll just hit back and you can see right here that here's my list of uh, settings and resolution is added right there. I also added microphone and LED brightness uh, so that I could adjust those things on the fly. So now I'm gonna go ahead and close Armory Crate. There we go. And then I'm gonna open up my command center. Once I've got my command center open, right here you can see resolution. And if I uh, either tap that with my finger or I can have just used the A button if I wanted, now everything is running at 720p. And if you look over here, you're going to see that the frames per second um, that is um, that Diablo 4 is currently running at is now hovering at around 70 uh, frames per second instead of what I was getting before. So if I switch this back, over to 1080p now we're switched over to 1080p and as we can see right here but now i'm sitting around 50 frames per second 40 frames per second uh, depending on what's happening on the screen so if you want to get a frames per second boost and you can't actually use the game's settings to um, adjust the resolution then all you have to do is open up your command center and do it right there. Another thing that I noticed in my initial first look at the ROG Ally was that when I loaded up Street Fighter VI, the buttons, the face buttons right here, were not configured properly. Basically, B and A were swapped and X and Y were swapped, and I could not figure out why that was. Oh, well, an awesome viewer pointed out that perhaps this had something to do with Steam. So, by default, uh, I launched this game through the Armory Crate software, which means that it launches Steam and then launches the game, which is perfectly fine, that works really well. If I press the Y button, it should be doing my special move, but instead what's happening is it is pushing the X button. So if I push my X button, that's gonna do my special move. So how exactly do we fix this? Well, it's an issue that has to do with Steam, not anything to do with the game itself and not anything to do with the ROG Ally itself. Uh, so if I'm gonna go ahead and quit, uh, see the buttons are reversed, so I'm screwing things up. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and quit out of the game and then we'll load up Steam. All right, so here we are in Steam, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back out. You'll notice that I'm pressing the wrong button right now in order to back out, and if you come down here to settings, you're gonna find out why. I don't know why, but when it installed Steam, it automatically set my controller to use the Nintendo button layout. So if you turn that off, which I apparently cannot do, there we go. So if you turn that off, now all of your buttons are gonna work the way that you expect them to. And now that I've changed that setting in Steam, you can see that the buttons have been now fixed. And if I wanna press my special move button, it is now the Y button. And then these are my other attack buttons. This is a much better way to play. Uh, previously, what I had done is I went into the armory crate and if you press X over a tile, you can then come down here to key mapping and I ended up remapping my A, B, X, Y buttons on Street Fighter VI to be reversed. But now I don't have to do that anymore uh, because 
the game is just working the way that I want it to. By the way, this game, fantastic on the ROG Ally. Runs really, really well. Well, at least in the battle mode, I don't really go into the open world stuff, so I don't know anything about that. All right, speaking of issues with Steam, another issue that you are likely to run into is the fact that Steam does not automatically recognize an SD card when you put it in the ROG Ally. So in order to fix that, what I'm going to have to do is skip out to desktop mode essentially. So I'm gonna go ahead and press my, not that button, I'm gonna go ahead and press uh, B in Steam. I'm gonna come down here to power. Once I'm under power, I'll go down to exit big picture mode. After I've exited big picture mode, I need to make sure that this is behaving like a uh, mouse and keyboard. So I'm going to quit, hit my command center and I'm gonna set my uh, control mode over to desktop. Uh, you do have the option of using auto, which kind of flip flops back and forth between them. I like to do it manually myself, so I'm just gonna leave it on desktop. And now I can use the joystick in order to navigate the mouse, which I'll come all the way over here to the Steam menu. I'll use the right bumper in order to do a left click. And then under settings, I'm gonna come down to storage and up here, I've got this little plus button, which I could also just tap with my finger and it's going to add a new Steam library folder. And this is not the SD card that I actually am going to use with my ROG Ally. I was foolish and didn't order one ahead of time, but I'll go ahead and click add anyway. So now I have a new place to set games. And if I want to, I could even set that as the default, which I'm not going to do because this is not going to be my actual SD card that I'll use. And I'll go back into big picture mode because it's a little bit easier to navigate while that's loading up. I'll switch back over to gamepad mode because it's a, a better experience there. And now if I want to look at my entire library, I'll pick a game and if I wanna install it, it's going to ask me where I want to install and then I would just select my D drive and have it installed there and I will be all set. The next problem is the fingerprint sensor not recognizing your finger when you go to log in. Sometimes you may run into this and you'll have to remove your fingerprint and re-add it. So in order to do that on desktop, go swipe up from the bottom and tap on settings. Once you're in settings, it'll say find a setting. I'm gonna tap right there and I'll type in hello and I will spell it wrong, enter. And the reason I'm typing in hello is because that's using Windows hello in order to sign in. So then I can click on fingerprint sign in. After I do that, I can then click on fingerprint recognition and I can remove the finger that I already have uh, a set up for the sensor. And then I can add another finger or I can remove and then re-add the same finger. I highly recommend that after you've got everything set up, if you're running into any issues with the fingerprint sensor, go ahead and go into this setting, hit remove, add your finger back in, and it should work much better. So if I go ahead and close this down, and then if I turn it back on and I just leave my finger right on the sensor, it automatically jumps into uh, desktop mode, and then I can press this in order to start Armory Crate, and then we'll be off to the races to actually play. Now, the next problem that you're likely to run into with the ROG Ally is illustrated right here. My battery is currently sitting at 22%. So I guess I better plug this thing in and get it charging. Uh, let me flip this up. And um, there we go, now it's charging. Now, what am I using to charge it? Well, I am not using the included ROG Ally 65 watt charger. It's great that it comes with a charger. I like that a lot. What I don't like is that the prongs don't fold down and I don't like that the USB-C cable is attached to it. The most likely point of failure is that cable. So we do not wanna have that. I have a couple of options to show you. First off, I will say that Ugreen has sponsored the channel before, but they are not sponsoring this video. I'm talking about them in this video because I really like their stuff. This is their 100 watt USB charger. Uh, you can see that it's got foldable prongs so that it's not going to scratch things up in your bag. Uh, and it has three USB ports on the back and one USB-A port on the back. Uh, so that's one option. Another option, and the one that I use for almost everything, is my Ugreen 140 watt charger. Now this one doesn't have nearly as many USB ports on it. It only has two USB-C and one USB-A. It does also have the flipping down prongs, which I really like, but 
this will charge things much faster. Now, the ROG Ally needs a 65 watt charger. So either one of these ports that you plug the, the ROG Ally into is going to charge it at the correct speed. And this wire right here that's currently plugged into the ROG Ally is plugged into another 140 watt charger that actually has a second USB-C cable so I can charge multiple things at the same time like my Retroid Pocket Flip can get plugged in and charged while I'm waiting. And oh, I, okay, I just saw something pop up on the screen. Let's see what it said. Okay, so it's on battery and it's in turbo. So now if I plug this in, let's see what comes up. It switched it over to performance. Now, why did it switch it over to performance from turbo? The reason that that's happening is because with this charger, the more things that you have plugged in, the less power delivery you're going to get to each one of those ports. So when I plug my Retroid Pocket Flip in to charge, there's not enough power going to the ROG Ally in order to maintain the 35 watt mode, which under performance setting would be the turbo mode. Uh, that's something to keep in mind with this. Yes, you could use the official one and it would work in turbo mode, no problem. But if you are doing that, then you don't have the option to plug in other things. And with the, the, setting, the setup that I have, I can charge multiple things at once. And if I only have this plugged in, then it's going to be on turbo, which is what you want when you're playing something docked. And speaking of docks, this is the iVolar Steam Deck dock. It has three USB-A ports on the back. It has one power delivery port. This is what you put hook your uh, USB-C cord up to. It also has um, uh, HDMI and it has uh, RJ45 plug as well. Uh, it doesn't have any problems holding the ROG Ally and the cord reaches over to plug into the ROG Ally just fine. Uh, so I can highly recommend this for a, uh, a dock for your ROG Ally, especially if you're not going to get the proprietary um, external uh, video card that uh, you could use with the ROG Ally, which in my opinion is just way too expensive for what it is. Another accessory that you might want to have with you, especially because the ROG Ally doesn't have the biggest battery in it, is this 65 watt, 20,000 milliamp hour battery. Uh, it has, let's see if I can get it to go into focus, it has two USB-A ports, a USB micro port, and a USB-C port. So if you've got this and a USB-C cord, you should be able to top off your uh, ROG Ally, no problem. And I am a big, big fan of that battery pack. But I have other options for battery packs too. Another really good battery bank is the Basis Blade 100 watt, 20,000 milliamp hour battery pack. It has two USB-C ports on the top as well as two USB-A ports. I like this because it's thin, it's light. They both have the same capacity, uh, but this one will charge a little bit faster than this one will. Uh, I also like this because it's thin. In addition to all these accessories, you're also going to want an SD card. Now currently, in mine, I have this tiny 128 gigabyte uh, card from Lexar. I would not recommend this card. This is just something that I had laying around. Instead, I'm going to show you the one that's in my currently in my Steam Deck, which is this one terabyte card from SanDisk. You definitely want to make sure that it says A2. That way you get faster read and write speeds. And that's going to be really important for some games that need a little bit more oomph than a cheap card. Uh, this is the one that came out of my Steam Deck, and I have ordered another one for the ROG Ally. It just is not here yet. But those are the accessories that I think you're going to want to pick up uh, for your ROG Ally. Next up are essential shortcuts, things that are going to make your life easier, especially since you're using Windows without a keyboard and mouse. So number one, if you press and hold the command center button like this, it is essentially the same as pressing control alt delete. If you want to bring up your task manager, you can do it that way. 
There's my task manager right there. I'll go ahead and close that. Uh, next up is button mapping. If you have custom button mapping that you've set up for a game, you can see what that custom button mapping is by pressing and holding the armory crate button. It'll bring up this overlay on the screen so you can see what each button does, which for some games could be incredibly important. Now, if you don't wanna press the control alt delete button like this, and I'll go ahead and hit cancel, but you wanna to get to the task manager really, really quickly, you can use these buttons on the back. This is the M1 button right here, and this is the M2 button. If I press either of those and I press down at the same time, that's going to bring up my command uh, task manager. My son was playing Street Fighter VI and he found that one out by accident, so that was really fun. Uh, for us to figure out what was happening in the middle of a fight. Uh, we can also press uh, M1, M2, and A in order to take a screenshot. So if something really cool happens, I wanna take a screenshot, I can just hold one of those buttons on the back and press A, and that is going to take a screenshot and save it to my Xbox game bar. If you wanna customize your controls for any particular thing, you can just press X in Armory Crate, and it's going to bring up your game Profile. This has a lot of stuff in it, uh, including the key mapping that I talked about before when I was talking about Street Fighter VI, but you can also uh, change up how sensitive your triggers are with these sliders. By the way, if you press mirror triggers, then they will change together. Uh, but if you don't have them, you can have them individually set if you don't have them mirrored. You can also go into your left stick and you can change your dead zones. I've seen a lot of people complain about the dead zones on the ROG Ally. I haven't really run into any issues with it, but I've never been somebody who's been super sensitive to that either. So if you wanna change your dead zone, you have the ability to do so. I'm going to hit Y and reset mine to the defaults because I don't wanna mess with anything because I'm pretty happy with how it is uh, right now. If you wanna get rid or uh, of your vibration, maybe it's annoying to you you can change that right here in your settings and you can also come down here to configuration and you can say all right so for shovel knight tur uh, dig if i'm playing this and the system is plugged into the to the wall go ahead and use turbo if i'm playing this and i'm not plugged into the wall i can set for this game i can set it to silent and have it sip on the battery instead of chug on the battery uh, and you could do that on a game by game basis so for instance i just changed that for shovel knight dig if i wanted to do that for say diablo i'll back out of this i come over here to diablo x i go down to configuration Notice that this is now on performance, not on silent, because I don't want to have this thing sip the battery when I'm playing Diablo 4. I want all the power that I can so that I can keep up with it. I can also, if I go back to Shovel Knight, I don't want to start it, don't start it. I think I started it. <laughs> I can go down here to my media gallery and I can see the screenshots that I have taken and I can even hit LB to manage or RB to share. And if I hit RB, and share it. It's either gonna go to Twitter or Instagram. I don't really do that all that often, but if you if you do, now you know how. One more bonus tip for you before we get out of here is you can move your real-time monitor out of the way. If you bring that up, you can just tap on it. Oh, I think I have to be in desktop mode. Yeah, there you go. And you're in desktop mode, you can move this wherever you want. So for instance, when I was playing Diablo 4, this was in the map and I couldn't really see the numbers. So I clicked it and moved it out of the way so that I could see what was happening a whole lot better. So uh, that's just my little bonus for you. Again, if you want to do that, you just turn on the real-time monitor, make sure that you in the command center, you are in desktop mode, and then you can click and drag this around. Uh, and then once you're happy with it, you can just go back into gamepad mode and go ahead and play your games. So those are the problems and solutions that I've run into with the ROG Ally. What are some tips and tricks that you guys have for the ROG Ally? Let us know in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, you'll probably enjoy this video as well. From the Nerd Nest, I'm Bill. Stay rad, everybody.